was good. If you guys can't tell, I'm feeling a little sick right now, and it just sucks being sick. So if you don't want to get sick, make sure you wash your hands after watching this video, because these things spread like a wildfire. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to today's video. Today, we're going to go over the two confusing types of percent questions that show up on the SAT. Did you know that there are two different types of percent questions? Well, if you didn't, I mean, it's not your fault. It's, it's pretty normal because every single book out there, every single SAT book out there, none of them are talking about this. I literally ordered every single book on Amazon about SAT and read through every single one of them, and none of them are talking about these two different types. And as a result, people are missing these present questions. So make sure you stick until the end of the video to master these two types of questions. And if you're ready to get started, smash the like button and let's get straight into it. As always, we're gonna break this video down into four simple steps. First step is going to be, what do these percent questions look like on the actual SAT? And second, what are these two different types of percent questions? And third, what, are, what do we have to know for these two different types of questions? And fourth, we're gonna go over a simple trick that you can use to solve every single one of these percent questions as quickly as possible and as accurately as possible. So how can we tell that we are currently dealing with a percent problem? Well, it's actually really simple. You look at the question and see if there is any kind of percent. And if you see any kind of percent, there is a very high chance that we're dealing with 8% questions. And when we are given 8% questions, there are two different types. And they are going to be finding 20% of something versus finding 20% less or more of something, okay? Those are going to be the two different types. If you understand the difference between the two types, that's great. But if not, let me explain a little bit more using a simple example. First type. Finding 20% of the current population, right? Let's say you're looking for 20% of the current population. Here's what you do. Let's say this bar represents our current population, okay? And if you're looking for 20% of the current population, you're essentially just looking for this little tiny, teeny, tiny bit right here. And you're not finding this 80%, you're only trying to find this 20%. Therefore, how do we do that? We just multiply the population by 0 0.2 because whenever you're finding percent of something you multiply by the decimal version of that percent and we know 0.2 is decimal version of 20 percent and if you do that the result is going to represent the 20 percent of the population now that was really simple but let's go to the second type this is where it gets a little bit confusing second type finding 20 percent less than the current population, right? So are we looking for 20% of the current population? Mm, not really, we're finding 20% less, okay? So here's what I mean. Again, same thing, the population is represented this bar right here, and 20% is right here, and 80% is obviously gonna be right here. Now, if you're looking for 20% less than the current population, are you looking for this 20%? No, you're not. You're not looking for the 20%, but rather you're looking for something that is 20% less than the current population. Our current population is 100%. And if it's 20% less than current population, what you're essentially looking for is this 80% right here. So in order for you to find the 80%, what you do is you multiply the population by the decimal version of 80%, which will be 0 0.8, okay? And that's coming from 80%. And if you do that, you're going to give in 20% less than current population. So what most people end up doing is they see this question and they see 20% less and they don't really understand what that really means. So they just find the 20% and they just put that as the answer. And the ridiculous thing is SAT knows people do that all the time. So they put 20% as like choice like A. It's just, it looks like you found the right answer because you just look at the choices and it's the first answer and it matches exactly what you found. So people pick that and that's the trap that SAT has set up and you fell right through it. So make sure you know these two types, the difference between finding 20% of something versus finding 20% less of something and maybe like more of something. Does that make sense? There's the big difference. So what do these questions look like on the actual SAT? Let's take a look at two of these examples. So the first one is going to be about ticket broker. Pause the video, take a second, read the question, and if you understand it, play the video again. All right, let's get started. A ticket broker sold 540 tickets for a concert, and the number of tickets this broker sold for this concert is 80% of the concert hall's seats, okay? So what's the total number of seats in the concert hall? So what's the question asking us to find? Total number of seats. And that's exactly what we're looking for. And based on the question, we're gonna pull out some important information. And that's going to be five, they sold 540 tickets, right? 
And it turns out this 540 tickets is 80% of the concert hall's seats. So 540 ticket is going to be 80% of total seats. And the question is asking, asking us to find this total seats, right? So how are we gonna do that? Let's say this bar represents the total seats, okay? So this bar represents total. And the question says 80%, 80% of the total seat is going to be 540. And there's going to be 20% that is not sold, right? But what we're looking for is going to be 100% of the seats. So how can we find that? What we're gonna do is we're gonna convert this information right here into an equation, okay? So the, this part right here tells us that 80, whoa. It tells us that 80% of total seat is going to be 540 tickets, right? So 80% of total seats is going to equal 540, which means we're gonna find 80% of total. And how can we do that? It's going to be total times 0 0.8 because it has to be the decimal version you multiply and that's going to equal what 540 and the total do we know what the total is we don't so what we're going to do is we're going to plug in a variable and we're going to put it as t okay so t times 0.8 is equal to 540 and how can we find out what t is equal to let me just erase that so how can we find out what total is equal to we just divide 0 0.8 and we isolate the t and what do we get for that? It's going to be 540 divided by 0.8. And if you do that, you get 675 is equal to T, okay? So T represents the total, right? And if that's exactly what the question is asking us to find, so answer is going to be 675. Ooh, it's getting hot. All right, so let's take a look at this question. It says the atomic weight of the unknown element in the atomic mass unit, AMU, is approximately 20% less than that of a calcium, okay? The atomic weight of a calcium is 40 AMU. The question is asking, which of the following best approximates the atomic weight in AMU of the unknown element, right? So in this case, what we're looking for is the weight of the unknown element. So as always, we're gonna write down some important information from this question. And it says the atomic weight of the unknown is going to be 20% less than that of calcium, okay? So it says AMU of unknown is 20% less than calcium, right? And the question tells us that the weight of calcium is 40 AMU, so calcium is going to be 40 AMU. So to better understand this question, I'm just gonna visualize it. And this bar represents the weight of the calcium. And weight of the calcium is going to be what? It's going to be 40 AMU. And what the question tells us is that the AMU of the unknown is going to be 20% less, right? So whatever the calcium is, if we take 20% away, that is going to be 80%, right? And that 80% is going to represent the weight of the unknown. Does that make sense? Which means in order for us to find the weight of the unknown, we have to find the 80% of the calcium's weight. So what do we have to do? We have to find 80% of calcium. And that's going to give us the weight of the unknown. And how can we exactly do that? We just convert this into an equation. 80% of calcium, well, it's just going to be calcium times 0 0.8 and unknown is going to be, well, just unknown. Okay, and do we know what calcium is equal to? Yes, calcium is 40 AMU. So we just put 40 right here. So if you do 0 0.8 of 40, that's going to give you the weight of the unknown. So if we just pull up our calculator right here, it's gonna do 40 times 0 0.8, and that's gonna give us 32, which means our answer, which is going to be 32. And 32 is going to represent the weight of the unknown, which means the, our answer is going to be choice C. Does that make sense? If you look at the work that I just did, it was actually really simple. But why is it so difficult for some people? It's because they look at the question, they don't really completely understand what's going on in the question. They just look at it and they get a little bit confused. And what they end up doing is they see 20% right here and then they see this 40 right here and they just ask themselves, hmm, you know what? Let me just find 20% of 40 because that's what SAT, question, SAT questions usually do. So they do 40 times 0 0.2. And if you do 40 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.2, you end up getting eight. 
and you're not really sure about whether that's the answer but when you look at the answer choices man this a is like right and right there it's the first answer the sat put so you see that you pick it and you move on to the next question without realizing that you just got the question wrong and if you look at the question it's number 17. guys this is from section four and if it's number 17 it's this question is not going to be that simple the questions get progressively harder and if it's number 17 it's going to have a little bit of difficulty in it it's not going to be as simple as just finding 40 times 0.2. So how can you get these questions right? You have to understand what the difference is between 20, 80% of something versus 20% less of something. And if you can do that, you're going to be set on these percent questions. So make sure you understand these two types. I mean, SAT questions can only get complicated to a certain level. And if you just, if you look at those two questions, it's as complicated as it's going to get. And also if percent is one of those things that you are really weak on, go to the description box down below and there is going to be a link which takes you to a private lecture. And this lecture is going to cover every single thing you need to know about percent questions on the SAT. And that's going to be it for today's video, guys. If you guys found this video helpful, make sure you smash the like button. If you guys love this kind of video and would love to see more, smash the love, not love button, subscribe button and turn the notification bell on because every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I release these videos summarizing exactly what you need to know for the SAT. So you won't have to spend hours and hours and hours flipping through SAT books, trying to find out exactly what you need to know to get the score you want. If you guys have any questions or comments, make sure you leave it in the comment box down below. And if there is a topic you want to see next, leave it in the comment box down below because this channel is based on what you guys want to see and not what I want to talk about. Um, the video is over, so go. Bye-bye. I'll see you next one. Shit, girl, nothing extra